YouTube, you're watching Melovision, an independent music journalism network. I'm joined here today with Bass Drum and Death. I caught your set yesterday. It was a, a really good one. Um, have you ever been through Everett before? Um, never through Everett specifically. We played Seattle a, a few times, and I guess I have been through like on the way from Seattle to Vancouver. Yeah. Or or vice versa, but um, but yeah, never in Everett. It's uh, it's yeah, it's been it's been lovely. We've been here for a couple of days now, so it's been really nice. Nice. Uh, where are you staying right now? Are you in town or are you up in Seattle or? Yeah, we're staying in town. They they put us up at the uh, the courtyard. Oh, for real? Uh, by Marriott, yeah. So. Oh, we, that's uh, a cool that's a cool building. Yeah, I haven't hit the pool yet, but uh, maybe <laughs> maybe uh, later tonight. Oh yeah, it's we'll see. It's a hot night. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um. So you know, you're you're Bass Drum of Death. That's your name. I'm curious. Do you have a certain make or size that you recommend for for? You know, having a bass drum of death. What is the what is the most lethal bass drum? I, I feel like it's all in the the right foot or left foot. It's all it's on the foot. That's what makes it. Uh, it's less about the drum. Deadly. It's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not necessarily the drum. It's about the, the power. Drummer. Yeah, the power behind the drum. Interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I, how many how many lives do you think your bass drum has claimed over the years? Um, not not nearly enough. <laughs> <laughs> you wish it was a higher you wish it was a higher death toll yeah, it needs to be like John Wick like, <laughs> yeah. yeah I love that um, John on so on the band's early output you were the sole creative force and uh, now at this point you're recording with a whole band how has that switch been for you and like have there been challenges or like has it been freeing in certain ways how, how has it been yeah it's been I'm, I'm pretty much still doing kind of things the same way that I did initially basically demoing stuff out it's just now i can take it to uh the guys in the band my brother and ian and then we they help me flesh it out nice so in a lot of ways like my uh, it's gotten way easier mm -hmm. just because i trust them and like you know they do a fantastic job and um so it makes it a lot easier and less stressful on me because like you know a lot of times like i would get down to it like recording and i was like oh man i have to play this part and yeah this part so it's nice to have you know some buddies in there that can like kind of uh help you know shoulder the workload for sure i hear that uh now you came up in mississippi um which you know i don't think at first glance a lot of people think you know that would be where like a like a like a really cool band would come out of necessarily what was the scene like for you and do you have bands there that you really like were affiliated with and still are or yeah i mean when i was um when i was coming up like in middle school and high school there was a, a really good band out of jackson mississippi called color revolt okay that i was really um a huge fan of and looked up to and i ended up playing in that band for a couple of shows and then the drummer from Color Volt ended up playing with me, and uh, yeah, yeah, so basically after after like college age ish in Mississippi, um, there were a bunch of we had a bunch of friends that were all doing stuff like my friend Dent May and um, um, who else? Uh, my my buddy Cole from Jackson. He was in he was in a band called Dead Gaze, and mm. um, yeah, my brother had a band called um, Young Buffalo, mm. and. Uh, yeah, it was it was pretty vibrant um, there for a while. We all lived in a house, like a big like five bedroom house, like kind of out in the county. It was called the Dude Ranch, hmm. and so we would all practice and rehearse and record out there, and also throw shows. So we had like um, who all played out there, like uh, Mac DeMarco, Unknown Mortal Orchestra. We had Grimes out there. One oh time. wow. <laughs> That's fucking and, sick. Uh, yeah. So and Jeff the Brotherhood. We had like a whole bunch of people um play out there so that kind of became a little bit of an incubator so it was actually really really cool when i was um when i was kind of coming up because all of my friends were like doing we were all we were all doing cool shit so we were all trying to like one up one another and yeah. stuff like that so um yeah it was actually it was actually pretty good so you'd say almost like the the kind of small town aspect maybe helped catalyze that somewhat huh yeah a little bit and i think i think too it was uh you know it's hard because um you know, I think it was just like kind of one of those like lightning in a bottle situations where hmm. it just kind of like all lined up and um, yeah, you know, it's it's kind of hard to do. I mean, even in bigger cities, it's kind of hard to sustain a scene. So I thought sure. it was really cool that 
you know, had we had that many people doing the shit that I like loved and, and respected, you know, in mm-hmm. such a small town. For sure, that's that's really awesome to hear. I know, like uh, even in Everett, it's it's yeah. cool. Like, you know, having having you come through town, for example, it's yeah, it was a pleasure to see you yesterday. Um, I'm curious, you know, your first album came out on Fat Possum back in 2011, and now it looks like you know you have a new release coming out with them, um, or you've had one. Yeah. Uh, what was that story like? Was there like a you know how was coming back to Fat Possum and, and getting to release again with them? Yeah, it was all pretty. Uh, it was all pretty organic. Both the the not being with them anymore. They basically they. Um, it was like a one album deal, mm-hmm. and then they just kind of like. You know, didn't really holler at me yeah. about the second record. Yeah. So I was like, well, I'm gonna just kind of fell out of yeah, touch. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. So I had a second record done. So then I just kind of moved on but then uh during the pandemic i moved back to uh to mississippi i was living i lived in new york city for seven years and i moved back to mississippi and i was kind of talking with one of the guys that um that has been a dear friend of mine that works there and basically it kind of went from there that you know it would make sense for both of us so i was really excited to be back Mm because they're you know growing up like they were like of course one of my favorites and um yeah so it's it's really cool and at this point it's like family you know it's like we mm. you know um that's kind of how how it works so yeah it's uh yeah it's been great but um but yeah we'll see totally uh how do you feel like how do you feel this interview is going so far pretty well yeah. how do you how do you feel I, i'm loving it yeah yeah. Good. yeah 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 i think we're good yeah <laughs> um You've had a lot of songs in different video game titles over the years, uh, you know, from Grand Theft Auto V to Forza Horizon. Are you a gamer by any means? Yeah, I mean a little bit. I'm like a, I'm like a bro gamer. Like I play like FIFA and okay. like Tony Hawk. And, oh, I love some and, Tony Hawk. And Grand Theft Auto. I have a Switch that I take out with me on tour. Nice. So I haven't, I haven't really like, I'm not like a super like Fortnite or Call of Duty or anything like that. That stuff like. Even like watching screen grabs and stuff like gives me like a headache. It's just a <laughs> lot going on. Yeah, it's overwhelming. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I I do play a fair amount of video games, but I wouldn't consider myself like a gamer. Like, yeah. I don't have like a headset or anything like that. Oh so. <laughs> yeah, no headset. I feel like if you have a headset and like a uh, like dedicated chair, then you're like a full on fucking gamer. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, what's what's your favorite Tony Hawk game? Um. There was one that I played back in the day. It was one of the weird ones. It was like Tony Hawk, like Underground. Or oh yeah. That one was Thug. good. But I just recently got for Switch. They only have the they have Tony Hawk one and two. Oh. So I've been playing those recently, and um, yeah, it's kind of crazy because I was used to playing them. I also have a Nintendo 64 at my house that oh, has nice. that I have Tony Hawk on. So whenever I play it on 64, I'm like, man, this. How did I even know what was going on back yeah. then? Because the mm-hmm. graphics are so, are just not. You're not used to that, especially yeah. after playing the new stuff. A but, lot of uh, aliasing. <laughs> yeah, I think I like Tony Hawk's Underground. I think was probably my favorite. That's um, a good one. I yeah. like the campaign in it. It's fun. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was also curious. Um, what's your favorite Grand Theft Auto game? Ooh. Um, what's the one? I think it's I think it's four. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. I like four because that's the it's the New York one, but it's like a step up from three, right? Like yeah. The, yeah. 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 Yeah, because three was pretty yeah small by comparison. Yeah, but yeah. three three is cool, but I like the three is the guy that like the the play the character you're playing like doesn't talk at mm-hmm. all, isn't that right? Yeah. 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 And uh, I like the I like the one in four. Um, but I haven't played it in so long. I need to. I need to revisit that. Totally. Uh, yeah, I think that was my favorite. And also, too, those radio stations in that one, like the rap radio station, was always really good. Totally. This is like old, like kind of like late '90s, like New York as fuck rap, which is like awesome. I think. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and you're coming to. Uh, you're going to Europe here in in June. Is that right? To where? Sorry. In June, you guys will be doing a quick run through uh, Eastern Canada. Yes. <laughs> well, are you excited for that tour? And where, yeah, where are gonna, you stopping? Yeah, it's gonna be fun. We're uh, 
Yeah, we're playing a, a few places that I've never been before. So, um, yeah, it'll be fun. And also, too, you know, it's hot as fuck in Mississippi in June. June so yeah, going anywhere yeah. north is usually like a good call. So I think Canada in June will be, uh, will be a lot of fun. For sure. Well, thank you so much for your time and stopping in and uh, having this quick interview with us. Yeah. Um, everybody, make sure to go follow Bass Drum of Death on all socials. It's all linked below. Uh, and make sure to smash that motherfucking like and subscribe button, please. And uh, you've been watching Melovision. Thank you so much for your time. I hope you have a great rest of the festival. Make sure you hit that pool. Absolutely. Thanks, guys. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>